Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In a previous episode, we took a look at a homemade Raspberry Pi spectrometer like this. Um, one of the most frequently asked questions I got at the back of that episode was, well, can we make it smaller? Um, so in this episode, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go. So back in episode 20, I demonstrated the homemade Raspberry Pi spectrometer, uh, which very simply consisted of a Raspberry Pi camera, a zoom lens that I picked up off eBay, and a diffraction grating spectroscope, which came from Pat and Hawksley, um, who are a UK company that uh, produce uh, diffraction gratings and spectroscopes for educational purposes. Um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty useful uh, tool. Uh, it's a little bit on the large side. If we compare it with, say, a Raspberry Pi 3, um, yes, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a large spectroscope, and there's been a lot of comments, you know, can we shrink this, can we make it any smaller? Uh, there was some talk on Hackaday about maybe integrating something like this into uh, tri uh, tricorders, um, like Star Trek tricorders, right? There's actual projects where people are trying to build these things. Um, but yeah, um, can we shrink this thing? At the back of the video uh, where I demonstrated this, uh, the director, Tom, from Patton Hawksley, actually sent me this, um, which is a miniature version. A uh, really, really generous gift. Um, this isn't a sponsorship or anything like that. It was just a thank you for the orders that have been generated, essentially. Um, it sent me some other kit as well, which will be featured in upcoming videos, no doubt, uh, diffraction gratings and slits and so forth. Uh, but let's take a look at this. This is a very, very tiny version of the diffraction grating spectroscope. Uh, we can see the slit in the end there and then we have the eyepiece uh, that you'd look through to see the spectrum. Um, it has to be said, when I tried this out with my eyeball, um, this performs just as well as its larger, um, as the larger version there. So obviously the question is, well, can we build um, a Raspberry Pi spectrometer out of this and obviously make a very, very small uh, diminutive version of its, uh, of its predecessor there? So I've gone shopping on eBay, um, I've picked up a little uh, Raspberry Pi camera with an M12 mount. Um, this actually has the IR cut filter removed, so we should be able to see a little bit of infrared. Um, should be noted that these cameras, uh, by default, come with a you know a standard sort of CCTV lens. So uh, the focal length of this is 3.6 millimeters. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about why that's important shortly. I also picked up a selection of lenses. Um, some third-party lenses to try and these have also all different focal lengths so we've got an 8mm focal length, a 12 and a 16. Um, why have I gone to all this effort? Well if we take a look at the, uh, at the lens I was using in the previous version, I've got quite a few of these lenses, they're handy for like AI projects and stuff, you know computer vision. Um, what's important about these is the focal length is actually variable between 9 and 22 millimeters, and this is what gives us the level of zoom essentially. So if we think about um, a standard, a standard lens, 3.6 millimeters. Um, the idea is that we get a very, very wide field of view. Um, so the virtual image um, that's produced just about fits on the on the CCD. If we start using longer focal lengths, we actually get a larger image or a larger virtual image projected onto the CCD, which means that we get a larger view in our case of the spectrum that we're uh, that we're looking at. Um, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Um, out of these three lenses. Um, I'd guessed ahead of time that 12 millimeters would be um, exactly where I wanted to be in terms of uh, fitting the entire spectrum in the entire field of view of the camera. Um, so that's what we're going to try today. I do also have 8 and 16 millimeters, um, and honestly, I just sort of bought these for experimental purposes. There's obviously um, other things that I'll be wanting to do with uh, with cameras if we're thinking about things like machine vision. Um, just out of curiosity, I mean, when we first try this, we'll try it with the standard lens um, so that you can see the difference. You know, we'll see what, uh, what kind of field of view you get with the standard uh, lens, and then obviously we'll try the 12 millimeters. So I built a small aluminium jig for this. Um, everything's adjustable, so the, the back camera mount, we can actually rotate on its axis if we want to look at a particular end of the spectrum. Uh, it's all just, you know, manufactured out of little bits of aluminium. Um, I'm a big fan of metal, um, but I'm sure some of you guys have 3D printers and you could probably come out with something uh, creative with a 3D printer. Anyway, um, I have the camera hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, before I can fit it in this mount, I need to remove the lens. Uh, everything's a friction fit although I do have set screws to retain things in position. And we'll use the stock 3.6 millimeter uh, lens first. I think my biggest complaint about the uh, Raspberry Pi cameras with the M12 mounts is more often than not the mounts are plastic. Uh, it's very, very easy to cross thread them. So there's my camera mounted. And then we just need to take the spectroscope 
and I'll just line this up and then we'll take a look at the software. So that's the spectrometer assembled. As you can see, very, very much smaller than the original. Um, you're looking at a length of about 80 millimeters. If we compare that with a, a Raspberry Pi Model 3, it's about the length of the Raspberry Pi. Excellent. So now that everything's set up, we'll just point it out the window and take a look at the software. Um, we should be able to see our, if I can get the, if I can get, the, get it lined up right, we should be able to see our spectrum. Um, needs a little bit of focus. I think that's about as good as I can get it. Um, yes, so we can see very, very small spectrum in the middle there. It looks like we're picking up some IR. We've got a couple of dark absorption bands way over at the uh, red end there. Excellent. I suppose we could attempt to calibrate it. Uh, so let's give that a go. I need a white surface. This lid will do. Uh, so we'll put peak hold on and we'll give it a quick blast. So there's 405. And we can see how tight this is already. And then we'll give it a quick blast with 650. There's 650. We'll hit calibrate. Um, we can see it's done something very, very interesting with my Graticule. Um, obviously, when I wrote this software, it was never designed to have such a narrow view of the, uh, of the spectrum there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit how you're doing. I think that's something uh, we could maybe fix. Um, yeah, so there's our, there's our spectrum. Now, it's kind of difficult to um, work out where the end is. I can see 700s popping up in the peak, so we're just in the near infrared, I would say. Excellent. Um, obviously, <laughs> this isn't this isn't the the sort of best way to run the software. Obviously, we've got too 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 narrow of a view. So let's disassemble this, and we'll replace the lens. So we'll just remove our spectroscope, and I should just be able to unscrew the lens, and we'll replace it with twelve millimeters. Again, you've got to be very gentle with these plastic M12 mounts. Right, we'll take a guess at where the, the focus is. Should be about right. Make sure everything's home. And we'll pull it into focus. I think that's about as good as we can expect to get. Awesome. So now we now we have a spectrum that is uh, more or less filling our field of view. Uh, we'll try and tilt the camera a little bit just to. That should be about it. And then obviously you know we tighten it up at this point. Uh, but yeah, looking so far so good. It's looking as good um, as the larger version. Let's do a quick cal on this. Let's see if we can get something a little bit more reasonable out of it. Uh, so we'll clear the points. Uh, we'll. Fire on peak hold. So there's 405. And then we'll 
calibrate 650. There's our 650. We'll hit Cal and now we've got something that looks a little bit more reasonable on the screen there. So let's take off peak hold and we'll have a quick look out of the window once more. Much better. Awesome. Um, like I say, every bit as capable as the larger version, uh, but in a much smaller package. Um, while we're about it, I have a fluorescent lamp on the bench. Um, let's see some, uh, some lines, some emission lines. Excellent. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. While we're on the subject of fluorescent tubes, um, everybody likes to see emission spectra. I mean, it's, it's marvellous seeing all those little peaks in there. Um, so I've got a few more tubes that we can try out today just because why not? I'm doing a video, so we might as well see some stuff. Um, I've got this, uh, which is a deuterium lamp. Um, this emits mostly UV, but I do believe uh, there should be the deuterium alpha line somewhere in the red um, and there should be a, 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 fairly, a fairly decent continuum in the middle of the emission there as well. Uh, this was something I picked up off eBay for like five quid, uh, which is not a bargain. You'd be looking at like 300 pounds for a lamp like this. Um, so we'll maybe give that a bill. Uh, one thing to note about things like deuterium lamps. Um, they emit copious amounts of ultraviolet. Um, so whatever you do, don't look at them uh, when they're in operation and don't expose your skin to them for uh, too long. Um, that's how you get skin cancer and, and uh, corneal ulcers, right? Nobody wants those kind of things. Uh, but we'll give it a quick try in a minute. Um, I've got some other lamps as well. Um, I picked up this. This is a, a black light, one of those UV black lights. I don't expect we'll see very, very much out of this, but there must be some uh, visible emission that we can see, surely. Um, I picked up this as well. Um, this is a pure mercury vapour lamp. This is a germicidal lamp. Uh, and once again, I uh, can't really stress too much the danger of looking into these things. Um, absolutely don't. Um, the ultraviolet that it emits is really quite dangerous. I think it's UVC. Um, so yeah, it would give you uh, quite the tan and uh, it can actually damage your eyes. So let's just turn off the fluorescent and we'll try a couple of these tubes. We'll try the UV black light first. I suspect we'll have to stick the spectroscope right up to it, but we'll see if we can see anything. Oh, interesting. So we can see a little way into the ultraviolet, which is actually really, really nice. Um, some guys had asked, um, you know, how far into the UV can, can these sort of cameras see? Um, I didn't think it would be very far, um, but we can see a peak there at 370, five or thereabouts. That's actually pretty impressive. I'm surprised, uh, very surprised to even see it. Um, we can see a 405 nanometer line there as well. How curious. Very, very interesting. Cool. Um, let's try another lamp. So we'll try the UVC lamp um, once again. I'm just looking at the camera monitor here, um, so I think I can get away with that. So this is our UVC lamp. This is mercury vapor only, and we can see specifically um, mercury vapor lines in there. So there's a, there's a red line, a green line, and a blue line and a violet line, uh, which is pretty nice. You know, if you wanted a, a spectroscopic standard to play with, um, you know, a wavelength standard, I suppose this would be a cheap solution, although uh, maybe a little a uh, little of a dangerous solution. Uh, yeah, as I've said, copious amounts of ultraviolet light are emitted by these kinds of lamps, so do be careful. Um, cool. So I have the deuterium lamp hooked up. Uh, if I point it towards the camera, we should be able to see its light output. Uh, it doesn't look particularly bright, but don't let it, uh, don't let it deceive you. Um, chances are high that the uh, UV out of this is excessive. So because it's a point source, it's actually pretty difficult to line it up with the spectrometer. But we can see some line and a little bit of a continuum. I don't really want to have to touch the envelope, but... Anyone 
anyway, not too exciting. Um, and like I say, chances are high that there is lots, um, lots and lots of ultraviolet being emitted there. So I have a very small uh, xenon lamp that you might find in a camera flash, for example. We'll see if we can get some light out of it. It's quite dim, but there's our xenon spectrum. I suppose if we put a reflector behind it, or I don't know, maybe even like actually drove it properly with a, with a high current, we'd be able to see something a little bit better. Um, but yeah, sure. Certainly detectable peaks in there anyway. So all in all, a very capable and useful uh, miniature spectrometer. Um, as I've said, much, much smaller than the previous version, only 80 millimeters in length. Um, we could weigh it. You know, if you guys are interested in sticking these things on drones or whatever and measuring the spectra of street lights, I suppose we could do that. So how many grams? 51 grams. Um, granted, you know, I've, I've sort of built all this out of aluminium. If you're gonna 3D print um, a case for this, I suppose you could get that a little bit lighter. Um, but yes, a, a very, very useful diminutive spectrometer, it has to be said. Um, I'll link in uh, the website for Patton Hawksley down below. So if you guys want to go and buy one of these, um, it's actually ever so slightly cheaper than its bigger brother. Um, it comes in at about 64 bucks, you know, plus or minus a, a, a few pence or whatever. Um, yeah, the camera is just a regular Pi camera with an M12 mount. Uh, and don't forget, if you want to, you know, have the spectrum fill the screen as I've shown you today, uh, you want to go pick yourself up a 12 millimeter lens. Um, again, very, very cheap. You can, you find these things all over eBay. If you're interested in, you know, doing, uh, doing things with Pi cameras and, uh, and whatnot, it's always a good idea to get a selection of lenses in anyway, um, so that you can fine tune uh, your application. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.